The four quadrant multiplier is a voltage controlled at an inverter, so it can amplify a signal or invert it. As you can see, it is already running because there are two semi normalization, but we will get to them later on. And for now, we are going to demonstrate it with two external signals that you can patch to its input, and then you can take the output and patch it whenever you need it. The two external signal will be an LFO coming from another phalistry, like this one, and I'm going to set it to a sawtooth or a ramp waveform, so with zero attack it will immediately jump to the falling stage and then go down. So I will patch this one to either of the two inputs, like this. And then I will use one signal coming from the 321 with nothing patched, which will output a voltage offset, which is a plain voltage value that can be positive or negative. And then I'm going to patch it, I'm going to set it to close to zero and patch it here. And you can see that no light is flashing. It means that now the four quadrant multiplier is idling. And to demonstrate, I'm going to patch Brainsaw's final output to my CGM and patch the four quadrant multiplier output to, let's say, the wave folder input, CV input. And you can see that as I increase my voltage offset, I am amplifying my sawtooth coming from this phalistry. Why I choose a sawtooth? Because as soon as I invert it, the difference will be clear. you can see that now this LED is flashing and now this one with the plus and the minus. We are using two quadrants because we are multiplying a unipolar signal by a positive or a negative voltages and here we have a visual cue of which quadrant is in use. So if our signal is positive or negative or both in case it is bipolar. Talking about bipolar, I can take my LFO from here instead of here and use a bipolar signal multiplied by a voltage offset. And you can hear and, and even see that now we are using two quadrants. And as soon as I invert it, it will shift to the other two. But as I said earlier, we have a couple of semi-normalizations going on and we have a visual cue with the dashed lines that encircle these two inputs. So this is a semi-normal to the yellow unipolar output and this is semi-normal to the green bipolar output just like the one that we used earlier from this phalistry here so what happens when I patch my four quadrant multiplier output to my Brainsaw's wave folder CV input well nothing for now because both my oscillators are to the rest stage so I have a zero multiplying the bipolar output will multiplying a minus 5 volt because this is bipolar so if I activate the green generator nothing happens but if I activate this one I will multiply a negative value and you can see that one quadrant will activate now I would need to set my wave folder higher because now I am multiplying minus 5 volts by 10 volts but if I set my green generator to loop 
something like this for example and then I trig my yellow generator which is in hold mode I will amplify this bipolar LFO and you will see the two quadrants flashing and as soon as this one goes back to zero nothing will come out of the quadrant for quadrant multiplier I can even attenuate the output through this knob here Now you may wonder what happens if I override the internal semi-normalization with a yellow bipolar signal and you will see and hear that it will bring this on. But inverted because now I am using a negative voltage as my default offset and as soon as I um, trig the envelope it will flip it and if I activate both LFOs that the yellow LFO will cyclically amplify and invert the green one which is going faster for clarity you will also see that the four quadrants are active now if you remember we can scale the green generator to a fastest time scale and use it as an oscillator now if you combine this feature with the internal semi-normalization it means that we are running an oscillator through a voltage control at an inverter. And if I patch this output here you will hear that the yellow LFO will control the green generator's amplitude. And I can even use it as an envelope. This implies that if I use a stream of gates to trig my yellow envelope I can use this as a sort of VCA and if I use a CV to control this oscillator's frequency I will have a synth voice which I can wave shape The yellow generator can go to audio rate too. Instead of using it as an envelope to control this oscillator's amplitude, we can use it as an other oscillator to perform amplitude modulation. What happens when we override the internal semi-normalization with the bipolar signal? We have ring modulation and the perception and the illusion that all the four quadrants are working at the same time. So to sum up, amplitude modulation, two quadrants, ring modulation, four quadrants. We shot a FRAP talk on amplitude modulation and ring modulation that I will link here and in the description. So check that out if we want to dive more into this world. The gray section is a frequency divider or a logic gate called flip-flop. 
So whenever it detects a rising edge at its input, it will change its state from low to high and vice versa, ignoring the falling edges. As a result, it takes two changes of state at its input to make one at the output. And if the input is a regular stream of gate, the output provides another stream which is half its frequency. There are two frequency dividers which you can use independently. However, the first divider's output is semi-normal to the second divider's input. So you can see the dashed line. Which means that you can achieve a division by two and a division by four at the same time with the same input signal. Since the semi-normalization is on the input, you can use the two outputs together independently. I'm gonna demonstrate it by setting the yellow generator to LFO and use the end of rise to feed this input. You can see that this needs to flash two times to make this flash one time and this needs to flash four times to make this one flash one time. So this is the first gate, the end of rise. I'm gonna route it to the frequency dividers. This is the first division by two. And this is the second division. Now, since the division, since the semi-normalization is on the input, I can use the output elsewhere in my patch example here as always I can always break the internal semi-normalization by using another stream of gates like this one which is completely unrelated and now I am using the two sections independently the switch on the right chooses between a unipolar behavior on top and a bipolar behavior on the bottom, so 0, 10 or minus 5, plus 5. You can see that to better appreciate a bipolar behavior and a, a square wave LFO, I need to set my parameter halfway through so that I can modulate up and down instead of just up as in the bipolar case, as in the unipolar case. But there is also another use for the bipolar behavior, which is this one. If I patch my gate output straight to the CGM, I won't hear that much right now, but I can set my yellow generator to audio rate. And this becomes a frequency divider, playing a tone exactly one octave lower than this one. Or even two. We can feed it with many audio signals, but the circuit performs best with pulse waves. We can also feed it with irregular pulses, like Sapel's famous clock output that we can use to ping the brain so. And in this case, the output will be unpredictable. But as opposed to Sapel's clock output, these will be gates, so we are converting a trig signal to a gate 1. Now, if I patch it to the ping input, this won't make much of a difference, but I can patch it to my wavefolder CV input. Now, the final section is the slew limiter, which smoothens any voltage transition from either low to high or high to low, making it even slower. The most apparent way to use it is with steep voltage changes like uh, the volt per octave signal or the gates that we are using right now. So for example, I can send uh, this gate here to the slew limiter and then use it, patch it again to bring those wave folder CV input. You can hear
here that this gate is now more lazy going up and going down and I have independent controls over the raising and the falling stages so for example I can choose to have steep voltage transition going up but slow going down or vice versa again for comparison this is what the original patch was like but probably the most famous use of the ZLU limiter is with volt productive signals to perform the classic glide sound of analog monosynth with the difference here that I can choose to glide only going down or going up or both this becomes more evident when the two voltages are far from each other so the ZLU limiter will take longer from getting to one voltage to another for getting from one voltage to another we shot another frap talk on ZLU limiters and the techniques of glissando and portamento glide and so on which i will link here and in the description if you want to dive more into that as we said earlier if we patch a trig or a gate to this input we can create a sort of uh, fake third envelope that can be very handy when we are using all when we are already using the two generators for other purposes but we have no control over this envelope level and uh, it depends on the amplitude of the gate signal that we are or trig that we are routing through it as you may see the slew limiter has an input which is semi-normal to the yellow unipolar output just like the first four quadrant multiplier input and the reason is that in this way we can obtain a slower envelope based on the same time pulse that we route to this envelope here for example we can use the unipolar output to control the amplitude of our signal with a very sharp attack and we can patch the integrated output to our wave folder input to control the timber so right now they start nearly uh, together but I can integrate the rising time and have a sharp transient controlling my amplitude and then a slower envelope controlling my timber <laughs> 